Environment tools can help you create many accurate topographies for different design stages in your project. But in this video, I want to show you how to use environment tools to make a very quick cut and fill estimation for your design. As you probably know, in Revit, if I have two topographies in two different design phases, so one can be an existing phase, one in new construction, I will automatically get the volume difference between them, so the cut and fill calcula calculation. So in this example, you can see in yellow, I have this topography that was created in the, in the existing stage and was, of course, demolished in the new construction. And then over here, I have this small topography Let's take a look at the properties of this surface, and you can see that since it's of a different stage, it's in the new construction stage, I can immediately get the cut and fill calculation between the existing and the new construction. The problem is that in my model, I use more than just topographies. Sometimes I would want to use a floor to get the layers, so I want to use a floor to represent the hardscape. However, Using a floor, I cannot get the cut and fill calculation. So what I want to do is I want to get a topography under my slabs, whether it's a floor or a roof. I want to get a topography under there to get the calculation of the cut and fill. And all these topographies together would be my cut and fill estimation. There's one way to do it using environment topography tools. So first, you want to flip your model because you want this new topography to be at the bottom face of the slab so it would really represent the excavation and then you can go to environment topography tools and use the peak face command to simply create a topography that's on the face on this floor on this slab but um, the way topographies in Revit behave they have no boundary and if I use this command it will force me to go ahead and split each and every surface and that's a lot of work so in this video, I want to show you a nice uh, workaround using environment tools. I would actually um, use the export land XML feature to be able to export these surfaces as a, as a civil surfaces and then re-import them. And when they are re-imported, they right away have the boundary. So let's see how it works. I would now go to environment and then use the um, export to land XML feature. In the system of measurements, I will select metric, of course. And then don't forget to work in shared coordinate system. So once you re-import them into the file, they fall right into place. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and select all the floors that I want to export. I will now browse to save them in the location that I want. Let me just go ahead and call them topo for excavation and save. So now that I have everything exported to a land XML file format, I will go ahead and re-import it into my file. Let's go to environment, and this time we will choose the external civil data to just bring it back into my file. I will now browse to find the file that I just saved, topo for excavation, and let's click on open. Let's wait for a few seconds, and once these are imported, you can already see in the preview window that everything, all these topographies are in my file now with the original boundary. And let me tell you, they have the original triangulation. So you can be very sure you're getting a very accurate result. Now that they're in my file, let's click on OK and get out of the external civil data. Let's uh, just select one of these topographies. And you can uh, scroll down in the properties and see that they have the cut and fill value. All I have to do right now to get my cut and fill evaluation is to go ahead and create cut and fill schedule. So let's go over to the project browser. I already have a cut and fill schedule prepared. 
And you can see that what's nice about it is that you can actually use as many surfaces as you want. Of course, in this schedule specifically, I already filtered out other topographies that I use as design elements, as help surfaces that I didn't want them in a schedule, but you can see that I can use multiple topographies to get the accurate cut and fill um, calculation that I need. Thank you so much for listening.